The Equitable Life Assurance Society presents This is Your FBI. This is Your FBI, the official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Presented as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. Do you own your own home? Is there a mortgage on it? Be sure to listen to the special message to homeowners from our sponsor, the Equitable Life Assurance Society. In just 14 minutes, you'll hear about America's finest plan for home ownership. It's the Equitable Society's Assured Home Ownership Plan. Don't miss it. Tonight's FBI file, The Professional Killer. Your FBI not only pursues every criminal who violates a federal statute, but it also makes a close, keen, analytical study of the field of crime all over the nation. For crime is the business your FBI is engaged in. And like every successful organization, it realizes that the more it knows about its business, the better job it'll be able to do. With that in mind, your FBI recently completed a study of crime throughout the 48 states. And the study brought forth one fact that is not only shocking, but is also indicative of the self-evident proof that the crime wave, unless stifled quickly, will soon be out of hand. That one single fact is that in the United States today and every day, there are 36 people murdered. In the past two hours, three people have been killed by criminals. Tonight's FBI file opens in a small, smart nightclub located in a large Midwestern city. In an office in the rear of this establishment, Larry Mansfield, the owner of the club, is just greeting a visitor. Sit down, Mr. West. Okay. You use cigars? No. When did you get to town? A couple of hours ago. Well, you, you make good time. I want to get out just as quick. Very well. We'll get right down to business. Good. Are you familiar with this town? Not very. Do you know where the Central Hotel is? No, but I'll find it. It's over on the west side. It's a small hotel. You may have... Can to... a cab get there? Yes. You get the directions. Just give me the address. Okay. Here it is. Right. The party I want taken care of lives in the Central Hotel. Room 819. Mm-hmm. Uh, here's the key. What's the party's name? Sanford. Sanford. Get it. Uh, West. Yeah. How do you intend to handle the killing? Why? Well, I just thought in as much as this is a hotel you're going Mr. to... Mr. Mansfield, let's get something straight, huh? You own this nightclub, don't you? Yeah. Am I telling you how to run it? No. It don't tell me how to run my business. Uh, sorry. What about Doe? I'll pay when the job is done. You come back here tomorrow night. I don't want to wait around that long. What's the matter with tomorrow morning? I won't be here. Oh, where do you live? I'll come there. All right. Here's my card. Thanks. Well, guess it's time I went to work. sweetheart. Oh, who are you? That don't matter. Well, how look, did you Look, look. Get... I got a gun here. Let me ask the questions. Go ahead. You live in this room? Yeah. What's your name? Sanford. Well, where's your husband? I don't have one. Well, where's your brother then, your father? 
That's a blank, too, mister. Well, who else lived in this room with you? Nobody. You live here alone? Yeah. This is no sure. Where are you going? I'm getting out of here. Wait a minute. Out of my way. I want to ask you one question. Well. Who sent you here? Nobody. Look, honey, I've been around. I know a hired gunsel when I see one. That? Yes, that is your touch, right? You're right. Now tell me who paid you to come here. No dice. Was it a guy named Mansfield? Was it? We'd had my business. We always protect a client. Oh, I know it was Mansfield. I should have figured he'd make this kind of a place. Look, what difference does it make who it was? You come off lucky, didn't you? Yeah. And forget it. Now let me get out of here. Wait a minute. One more question. What now? You were paid to get rid of me. Why didn't you do it? Look, I don't... I want to know. I don't kill Danes. Oh. Do you, uh, buy Danes drinks? Sometimes. I'm awful thirsty. In the same city, a bit later that evening, in the FBI field office, Special Agent Jim Taylor has just returned from an assignment. Jim. Oh, yes, Neil. A call came in for you less than five minutes ago. I took the message. Oh, it was a... Interstate bus company. Oh, yeah. The driver you wanted to see is out of town. He'll come over to see you first thing in the morning. Oh, good. What are you working on? It's kind of a strange assignment, Neil. What's the story? Well, a thief named Lou Palmer was convicted two years ago for sticking up a bank messenger. Over $78,000 was stolen on that job. Hmm. And the money was never recovered. I see. A few days ago, Palmer sent word to the warden at State's prison that he wanted to give some information as to the whereabouts of the money. What brought that on? Well, it turned out to be revenge. Palmer revealed that he had two Confederates on the job, a man and a woman. They evidently promised to take care of Palmer's family out of the loop. When they reneged, he talked. Who were these people? Well, the man's name was Larry Kent. The woman, she was Kent's girl. Her name was Vi Sanford. And you're looking for them? That's right. What progress have you made? Well, we've established that Kent and his girl were living in Cleveland at the time of the robbery. Immediately after it, Kent disappeared. Well, what about the Sanford girl? Well, she stayed on there. Evidently, Kent had walked out on her. She was living in a cheap room and working as a cashier in a restaurant. Kent apparently wound up with all the money. That's it. Has the girl been picked up? No, she left Cleveland two days ago, believed to be headed for here. I see. And from what we could gather, she's looking for Kent. She'd been tipped off that he was here. Jim, do you know where to find her? No, not yet. This bus driver I sent for may help us on that, though. She was on his bus. You alerted the local police? Yes, I gave them the girl's picture, and they're starting a check on all hotels now. We should get something on her very soon. Oh, Phil, I could go on for hours with all the details, but that's more or less the story. Sounds like a nice guy. Oh, charming. Look, baby, when he walked out on you, didn't he leave you any part of that 78000 No. How about the guy in the can? Did he do anything for him? Lee Palmer? Yeah. Not a nickel's worth. <laughs> Phil, can we have another drink? Yeah, sure, honey. Well, waiter, let's have the same thing. Right. Why, how did you tell him here? Well, like I told you, I was a cashier in this joint in Cleveland. Yeah. An old-time grifter came in one night and slipped me a note when he paid his check. Uh Uh-huh. The note said he'd seen Kent in this town, that he was using his old name. That's Mansfield. Oh. It also said he was doing what he always wanted to do. Well, I knew that meant he was operating a nightclub. So? So I called enough joints till I finally nailed him. He must have been real surprised, huh? Plenty. Well, did you ask him for your cut? Oh, of course. He said he'd bring it to me tonight. Instead, he sent you. He did send you, didn't he? Yeah. I knew it. Are you sorry? Not now. Hey, uh... Just set him down. Right. Phil. Yeah, baby. How much was he paying you? For knocking you off? Hmm. Five bills. Did you collect? 
No. You know, he owes me a pretty good chunk. My end of that job was over 20000 Solid numbers. If you'll take a marker, how would you like to work for me? Baby, you just made yourself a deal. Morning, Jim. Oh, morning, Neil. Talk to the bus driver? Yes, he just left here. Did he give you anything? Well, I showed him the Sanford girl's picture, and he definitely identified her. Said she'd come in on his bus all right. Mm, did he have any idea where she went? Oh, unfortunately, he didn't. Uh, these pictures just came in, Jim. No, oh, what are they? Pictures of Kent. Oh, fine. Washington also sent a copy of his record. Swell, may I see it? Sure, here you are. Thanks. I read it through. There's nothing there at all to indicate where he's been for the last two years. No, I didn't imagine there would be. After all, he wound up with that 78000 and that's enough for a man to retire on for a few years, at least. Mm. Do you think he's gone into some legitimate business? Mm, could have. Well, even if he's here in town, he won't be easy to find. Probably changed his name, even his appearance. Yes, I know. Jim, I sent Kent's pictures and a copy of his record to the local police. They might have something on him. Fine, I sure hope so. Oh, I'll get it. Special Agent Taylor. Oh, yes, Sergeant. Yes, that's right. Wait, I'll, I'll write that down. Okay. Good work, Sergeant. Thanks a lot. Goodbye. Well, Neil, we're getting some action. What, Jim? That was police headquarters. The Sanford girl is registered at the Central Hotel. I think I'd better get right over there. Hello, Mr. Mansfield. Huh? What are you doing here? Waiting for you. How did you get into my apartment? You told me to come here. Not while I was out. I don't like to hang around in hallways. I don't like intruders. That makes a saving. Did you go to the Central Hotel last night? Yeah. Well? Well, what? Did you take care of that party? No. Huh? Why not? You didn't tell me it was a dame. What difference does that make? That's out of my line. Look, I made a deal with you. I got a better offer. What do you mean? Better let me tell him, Phil. Huh? Why? Hello, Larry. Why? Where did you come from? Mr. West brought me here. What? He's in a brand new business. Now he brings him back alive. What's this all about? Give him a rundown, baby. Sure. Mr. West here is working for me now. Now, look. I told him our whole story, Larry. He figures that I'm a lot more reliable to do business with. What are you talking about? Seventy-eight thousand dollars. Huh? That's the amount you ran out with. Remember? Now, oh, why? In the Save first the place. Save the alibis. We haven't got time for that. We haven't got time for any chatter. We just came here to collect. Collect what? My end. I figured it out on the way over. It comes to twenty-six thousand dollars. This whole thing's ridiculous. I want my cut, Larry. Now. You're not getting anything, Mister. You're in no position to talk that way. You keep out of this. I gotta protect my interests. I'm on the payroll. Get out of here, both of you. Bill, show him we mean business, huh? Sure, baby. Now, wait a minute. A few more treatments, honey. You'll collect. <laughs> Tonight's case from the official FBI files will be reopened in just a moment. Home. A home of my own. That's what I've worked and saved for all these years. My home, my family. If home means a lot to you, then investigate the Equitable Society's Assured Home Ownership Plan. It's a money saver... It's a home saver. It's America's finest plan for home ownership. A home saver, you say? That's right. Just listen to these four advantages of the Equitable Society's Assured Home Ownership Plan. First, during the owner's lifetime, a special cash fund is built up in this plan, ready for use if sickness or unemployment threaten home security. Second, as your mortgage shrinks, the cash fund increases. You can use it to pay off a 20-year mortgage, for example, in approximately 14 years. Third, 
Mortgage interest is only 4%, and there is a liberal allowance to help cover title search, lawyer's fees, and other closing costs. Fourth, if the owner dies, the Equitable Society cancels the mortgage. It's paid off in full. What's more, every dollar previously paid on principal is returned to the widow along with the canceled mortgage. You mean my wife would inherit our home free and clear? Yes, she would. And interest charges stop the day of death. All in all, a man is mighty lucky if his health, age, income, and the location of his home qualify him for an Equitable Society assured home ownership plan. Who can tell me if I qualify, Mr. Keating? Ask your Equitable Society representative. Get full information on the plan that protects you against the two major hazards of home mortgages, death and hard times. Look in the phone book or send a postcard care of this station to the Equitable Society. That's E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E. The Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Now back to the FBI file, The Professional Killer. How many times have you heard the expression, there is honor among thieves? Probably a thousand times. But next time you hear it, you'll know that it is not true. For as proven by tonight's case in the files of your FBI, criminals do not base their actions on loyalty, but on profit. They're always available to the highest bidder. The tragic thing is that they never learn that man cannot live alone, without friendships and alliances. For what is true of nations is also true of people. And if the last war proved nothing else, it proved beyond doubt that every nation is dependent upon every other nation, and that every person on earth is dependent in some measure on every other living human being. Tonight's file continues in Larry Mansfield's apartment. Mansfield, still unconscious, is stretched out on the floor. The erstwhile girl, Vi Sanford, and her gunman confederate are searching the premises. You find anything in that desk, honey? No, not yet. Let's see what's in this drawer. I think it'd be a wall safe behind one of these pictures. Oh, this is full of nothing but letters. Why, that dirty chief. These letters are from Dames. No. Look at this. This letter was written three years ago. I was still going with him then. My darling Larry, our date last night will be remembered always. How do you like that guy? Stop being a female. We got work to do. Look, there's no dough on his desk. Where else can we... Wait a minute. He's coming to You better watch him. Yeah, he's right beside him. Okay. How do we handle it now? We find out where his dough is. Otherwise, he gets a full treatment. Good. What... What hit me? You were standing right on the track, mister. Oh. Next time, you won't get off so easy. Can, can I get up? There we are. Larry, we want to continue our discussion. Before you left us, we were talking about $26,000. I, I don't know. The girl wants her money, mister. But I, I tell you... Look, I... let me tip you off. From now on, I use a gun. I'll get it up. I... I haven't got it here. Where is it? In my office at the club. Where in the office? In a safe. Okay. I want you to call the club. Tell them I'm coming over. Tell them I'm getting something out of that safe to bring back to you. Very, very well. How about the combination? I, I'll give it to her. Let me have it now. <laughs> Jim. I'm right down here, Dale. I've been looking all over for you. The hotel manager said you were on the floor below. Oh. Did you get a search warrant? Yeah, I have it right here. Good. This is the Sanford girl's room. I have a pass key. No sign of her, Jim? No, she left the hotel early this morning. Hasn't returned since. There was a man with her. He didn't answer to Kent's description. There we are. Go ahead, Neil. Right. I thought it might be a good idea to search your room and see if we get any leads. Now, there's a small bag over there. Hmm? 
Oh, yeah, I'll take a look at it. I'll see what's in that closet. All right. Did the management give you any line on what she's been doing? No, not much. He said she'd made quite a few phone calls. He's getting the slips together now. We'll pick them up on the way out. Uh, uh, nothing in this closet. Wait a minute, Neil. I got something here. No. What is it? It's a note. What's it say? Well, it's addressed to her from a man who signs himself Joe. Yes? It says that he saw Kent here. Kent is using his old name. Uh-huh. It also states that he's doing what he always wanted to do. Doing what he always wanted to do? That's it. Well, that really confuses things. <laughs> All we have to do now is find out Kent's old name and what this thing is that he's always wanted to do. <laughs> yes. But Neil, the Sanford girl must know both these things. Well, in that case, Jim, she's probably already found him. Yes, I know, which means she may never come back here. Neil will post someone here to watch for her anyway. Let's go down and pick up those slips of the telephone calls that she made. <laughs> Why don't you put that gun away? It makes me nervous. I'd be nervous without it. You handled me quite effectively before without a gun. You didn't know the score, then. Hmm. Uh, tell me something, will you? What is it? Why did you double-cross me? What do you mean? You started out in this deal working for me. Why did you switch? I didn't like the way you operate. Is that the only reason? Yeah. Hmm. I thought it could have been because you got a better offer. It had nothing to do with it. What has she promised you? What's it to you? I'd like to enter my bid. I don't get it. If I were to top her offer, maybe you'd come back to my team. Mister, that's just why I can't do business with you. <sighs> okay. Can we have a drink? Yeah, I guess so. And there's some scotch in the cabinet there. Would you get it? Where? On the lower shelf. I don't see any. <coughs> well, that ties the score. Hey, Jim. Oh, yes, Neil. The warden of the state's prison just called me back. And? He questioned Lou Palmer about Kent. Did he come up with anything? No, he had no idea what Kent's old name was. How about that business he always wanted to be in? He knew nothing about that either. Ah, I see. How are you making out? Well, I've combed through Kent's record. That didn't give us anything. Any word from the hotel? No, I just called there five minutes ago. The girl still hasn't returned. Excuse me, Jim. Oh, yes, Bob. Here's a report on those telephone numbers. Oh, thanks. Oh, Bob, did they get a location on all of them? Yes, it's all there. Swell. Thanks, Bob. Are these the calls the girl made from the hotel? Mm, that's right. So she made, uh... 21 calls. Let's see them. Okay. Here's the first one. Nightclub called the Ace of Clubs. Uh -huh. Next to Bar 8 Club. Next to the Angel Club. Are they Another... all nightclubs? Mm -hmm. So far they seem to be. Next three are. Jim, I think we've hit something. These four are clubs too. This could be the business Kent always wanted to be in. Yes, all these calls were to nightclubs. Did the manager of the hotel give you those calls in the sequence they were made? No, he said they were all mixed up. That's too bad. Obviously, the last call she made was where she found him. Yes, I know. Well, I guess we'll just have to go to each place and bring Kent's picture with us. That should Wait go. a minute, Neil. I don't think we'll have to do that. Why not? Look, all these clubs begin with either the letter A, B, or C. Uh-huh. She must have worked from a classified phone book, called each club in the order that it was listed. Right. In that case, the, uh, the Clover Club is the last place she called. Come on, Neil, that'll be our first place. Come in, Vi. Where's Phil? He's inside. Oh. Did you get the money? Yes. Hope you didn't have any trouble. No. Thought you said Phil was in here. There he is. Where? Right there on the floor. Uh what happened? It's just my turn to hit him. Say, what is this? It's my party now, Vi. Let me have my money. Wait a minute. Give it to me. I shit. <laughs> I gather it's in that bag. It's not your money. It belongs to me and you know it. Honey, we're not going into that again. Besides, you will have no need for it. Why not? One has to be alive to enjoy money. What are you talking about? I'm going to have to kill you, Vi. 
In fact, I'm killing you both. No, wait and a minute. It'll all be very legitimate, too. See, I came in, found you rifling my apartment, and I had to let you have it. You'll never get away with it. You forget, honey. In this town, I'm an honest man. Now, would you like it first? Larry, don't. Don't. Put away that gun. Larry Vine. Drop that gun. Go on, drop it, I say. Who are you? Special agents, the FBI. I'll pick oh, up his gun, Jim. Oh, you heard him. You heard what he was going to do. Oh, yes, Miss Sanford. We know all about both of you. That's where the manager led us in the back way. All right, Neil. Let's revive that man on the floor and take them all down to the office. By Sanford was sentenced to serve 10 years in a federal penitentiary for bank robbery. Her former accomplice was given a 20-year term for the same crime. Phil West was turned over to the local authorities to be prosecuted on an old murder charge. And thus, your FBI thwarted the plans of three criminals and also apprehended one for whom they had been looking for more than two years. Two years is a long time in the life of a criminal, but not to the Federal Bureau of Investigation, for their patience never runs out. Your FBI never gives up in the search for a criminal, even if it takes two, ten, or twenty years. No file is ever closed unless it is marked either convicted or dead. In just a moment, we will tell you about next week's exciting case from the files of your FBI. Mr. Keating, I've been thinking. I certainly hope I can qualify for that Equitable Society Assured Home Ownership Plan you were talking about. I do too, Jim, because look what you get in one package from the Equitable Society. A mortgage that's paid in full if the owner dies. If not, a cash fund to be used in financial emergencies. And mortgage interest at only 4%. No wonder it's called America's finest plan for home ownership. So don't delay. See your equitable representative soon. Or write to the Equitable Society, care of this station. That's E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E. The Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Next week, we will bring you another colorful story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, The Reluctant Thief. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious, and any similarity thereof to the names of persons living or dead is accidental. Tonight, the music was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner, your narrator was Dean Carlton, and Special Agent Taylor was played by Stacey Harris. This is your FBI is a Jerry Devine production. This is Larry Keating speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. And inviting you to tune in again next week at the same time when the Equitable Life Assurance Society will bring you another thrilling story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The Reluctant Thief on This Is Your FBI. Now, match wits with contestants as they try for amazing sums of radio's biggest money-paying quiz show, Break the Bank, which follows next. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company. <laughs>